We're going to do a quick Chapter 7 Mixed Review, and it I'll try and keep this under 15 minutes. We'll see what happens. Okay, we're just going to do some various examples. Now, we started off the chapter by just looking at basic ratios. You're going to have some ratios on your test. It'd be like x plus 5 over 2 is equal to 2x minus 1 over 10 or whatever. But you also have various uh, application ratios. <clears throat> now, I want to take a look at this. When I was uh, in Europe, I had to deal with this a lot. And what we have is a basic exchange rate. And right now, I checked the rates today. The euro is worth $1.30. That means if I buy one euro, i got to pay a buck thirty, And so on. So if I'm buying an antique uh, bench in Germany, it will cost me 830 euros. And 50, 830.5 euros. So how many dollars it cost? When we're doing ratios, one of the things I really emphasized was apples to apples. Apples to apples. Apples. Over oranges to oranges. We'll make oranges red. Okay, oranges to oranges. All right, so we got to compare the same thing to the same thing. So it doesn't matter what I do. I could put euros on top or on the bottom. I'll go ahead and put them on uh, top. Why not? And I'll just do one euro is worth a dollar thirty. So my euros are on top. Euros on top and dollars are on the bottom. Just make sure we have that comparison. And is equal to, um, let's see, what did I pay for the bench? 8.30, 50 euros, that's my euros. And since I don't know what's on the bottom, I just do that. Now I cross multiply, x is equal to 1.30 times 8.30.5. And I solve that ratio. Now, I already did it because I wasn't going to do this in my head, and it comes out to be that I paid uh, $1,079.65 for that bench. All right. We actually have several benches from Germany, but I have no idea what we paid for them. My wife did all that. So, moving on. Uh, we got triangle similarity. And the key points to remember, this is huge, is angles must be congruent and sides are proportional. I've already done videos on this, so this is just a real quick recap. You're going to have three possibilities. You're not going to have angle side to angle and some of the other congruency ones you had. We're just proving similarity. So angle angle, one of the very typical ones, is something that looks like this, but it only works if these lines are parallel. Now we know vertical angles are congruent. And given parallel lines and a transversal, alternate interior angles are also congruent. That gives us angle angle. Side angle side, we have to have a side, an angle, and a side. Now here's this right here. Do not assume things. Do not make up congruency. Similarity must be proven. When you're looking at two triangles versus two triangles, pick the small one and compare it to the small one. So you're going to do 12 over 16 is equal to whatever is left over. If there was a third side, we look at the biggest over the biggest. 15 over 20. And this ratio has to be the same. These both have to reduce down to the same fraction. 4 goes into that 3 over 4 times. So 3 over 4 is equal to, and 5 goes into that 3 fourths times. 3 over 4. And we're not done yet. We got two sides proportional. The angle, vertical angle, congruent, has to be worked out. So we have side, angle, side. Side, side, side is something you're familiar with from uh, middle school. Again, when comparing sides, we're going to rotate and flip and do all kinds of things. Pick smallest over smallest. 12 over 6. Middle over middle. 16 over 8. And so on. They all boil down to 1 half. 20 over 10 is 1 half. Now here's a typical example that we may throw at you. And what we have is... Three out of four of these are similar. Which one is not similar? Well, we got to deal with some definitions. Well, it looks like we have an isosceles here. That means these two angles are congruent. So you got to start playing with it. And I made these numbers real easy because I didn't feel like thinking today. So all this has to be 60 because that's the only way that this isosceles will work. These have to be the same. There's only 120 left over, so 120 divided by 2 is 60. Same here. This has to add up to 180. That has to be 60. So we know that these two are similar. 
Here we have an equilateral. Well, equilateral is also equal angular. All these have to be 60, so this is similar also. Now here's this guy. We got a 60 here, and we got a side and a side. Well, I don't know. This side is going to be different. Well, we know if that side is different, we, we can't do anything with this. That guy is not similar. Study this. I've done videos on something over this before. Angle, angle, side, angle, side, and side, side, side. I suggest looking at those if you're not on top of it. This one, hopefully you find an easy one. We just want to prove, we want to find out what this coordinate is right here. So we're going to take this triangle right here. See this triangle here? I could even redraw it if you want. Now, using this pen, I'm not doing a very good job. But this length is 10 and this length is 6. I don't care if they're going this way on this side of the coordinate plane where you have negative coordinates. Distances are always positive. Then I have the big triangle where this is 15. And we don't know what this is, so I'm going to call that x. Apples to apples, oranges to oranges. There's more than one way to do this. I tend to just do the same thing over and over again. 6 over 15 is equal to 10 over x. I'm going to simplify. I don't like working with big numbers. 3 goes into that 2 times, and 3 goes into that 5 times. Cross multiply, I get 2x is equal to 50. x is equal to 25. Well, that's my algebra answer. I need to find my geometry answer. It's asking for the coordinates of c. Well, I go 25 from the origin in this direction. That puts me at 25, 0. Moving on. And what you want to do with all these examples is some of these you know, some of these you may not, and some of these you want to refresh. What you should really be doing when you're watching these is putting it on pause, working them out yourself, and then checking your work with what I am doing. Dilation of coordinates. Well, this works out pretty well in most cases. So what we have, I took this straight from example one because I didn't feel like typing all this out. Because basically, we're just going to dilate by three halves. That means I'm going to multiply my x and my y coordinate by 3 halves. So I'm going to have a prime that tells them apart. And 3 halves times 0, 0 is just going to be 0, 0. b prime, I'm going to multiply by 3 halves. The x is going to be 0. And 4 times 3 halves is 4 divided by 2 is 2. 2 times 3 is 6. So that's going to be 6. Okay? c prime. And you could do these in the calculator. I have no idea what kind of problems you may experience in the future. So that's just going to be 3 times 3 halves is 9 halves or 4.5. I'll just write 9 halves or 4.5 is fine, however you want to do it. And 3 halves times 4, we are just going to divide by 2 again. We already did this one. That's going to be 6. And d prime is 3 times 3, 9 halves again. So this problem wasn't too creative. And 0. That's pretty much it. Whatever they come out is whatever they come out. Get used to multiplying by fractions. Next example. All right, this is more definitions than an example. You need to know this. If you do not know this, you're shooting yourself in the foot. You can erase an A and possibly a B to start off with. So you may be starting your test with a possible points out of 82 if you do not know these definitions. So sim ratio is just a comparison of one side to another. Once we know similarity, say we have triangles, and we have a side A, and we have a side B, and we know they're similar, we have to be told they're similar, we have A over B as our sim ratio, apples to apples. So the ratio of the perimeter just tends to work out to be the same. We don't do anything to it. It's still the ratio of the perimeter, the perimeter of 1 over the perimeter over 2 is still going to be the same thing, A over B. The ratio of the areas is just area 1 over area 2 is equal to A over B squared. And the ratio of volumes we're doing with solids here is going to be the ratio of the volume of 1 or the volume of 2, and that's going to be A over B cubed. Let's take a look at a couple examples. I got these out of the book because, again, it's no reason to recreate the wheel. Ratio of the perimeter. So we're talking perimeter. We go back to our definition. It's the same as our sim ratio. To the perimeter here, what is the sim ratio? That's what they're asking. Our sim ratio is just going to be 8, 9. So this is straight from a homework problem. Ratio of the area. Going back to the example, see? Area right here. We're going to square it. 
Well, this is just nothing more than a over b squared. So we just take the square root. So it's going to be 4 fifths is our sim ratio. Now we're looking for, we have, we're given the ratio of the area. What's the ratio of the perimeter? Ratio of the perimeter is the same as the sim ratio. So if we have 4 over 81, we know that is a over b squared. And we just take the square root of that to get a and b, which is 2 ninths. <clears throat> now volume. Volume, here we have that. And we know that volume is nothing more than a over b cubed. Okay, so if we just take the cube root of 27, which is 3, cube root of 64, which is 4, that's the sim ratio, and it's also the um, ratio of the perimeter, which is kind of sometimes confusing for a solid because they may not have a perimeter. Anyway, moving on. Here's a more traditional example, ratios of the area. Now pay particular attention to this problem, and you probably wanted to put it on pause and work it yourself. So pause work it. I'm back. All right, so I'm told they're similar. So I don't have anything to figure out. I don't have to solve for a side or anything like that. I don't even have to solve for the areas. I could if I wanted to, but don't need to. So I'm just going to compare apples to apples. Here's a key piece of information right here. ABC and DEF. That means AC corresponds to DF according to this right here. AC corresponds to DF. So I'm just going to do 7 over 11 is my sim ratio. Pretty easy. So the ratio of my area is I'm just going to square it. Remember that A over B squared? So we're going to have 49 over 121. That is it. Okay, moving on. Hopefully you had that pause and had that answer before I did it. Last example, and I just chose real easy numbers because it is a weekend and my head hurt. Oh, we got a problem here. I just want to solve for x. I know these triangles are similar because I have a big triangle cut by a parallel line. And there's a definition that involves if you give them parallel lines and so on and so on, we can have similarity. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is I have to compare apples to apples. I don't know what this side is. Don't really care right now. You may have a problem that asks that. You may have a problem that asks you to find all kinds of things. But right now we're just looking for x. So I'm going to compare this to something. There's more than one way to do this. One easy way is just compare this to 8. x over 8. Well, I compared this side to the big side. So I'm going to do the corresponding part over here. 10 over all this, which is 16. And I can simplify that. That's just going to be, well, 2 goes into that 5 times, and that goes into it 8 times. So I have 8x is equal to um, 40. x is equal to 5. I also knew that because just looking at it, you know you doubled things because it's proportional. All right, so x is equal to 5. That means this side over here is 3, blah, blah, blah. We could do other stuff. All right, that is pretty much it for this set of review. I want you to... Again, when you watch these videos, if you're watching it like TV, that is a no-no. You need to be pausing, working examples, and showing some discipline. Otherwise, you're really kind of just passive learning, and passive learning doesn't work for math. Alrighty, I will take a request during this week for any specific problems that you may want to see. And definitely prepare by doing the SIM worksheets 1, 2, and 3, and any other homework assignments you may want to review over that. We will see you tomorrow.